Okay. All right, ready? Boom. All right, welcome to my first ever podcast. Ooh, ooh. It is time to start talking about some shit, you know? I don't have a name for this yet, but I'll come up with something later. But Because cause that, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing right now is to just get things started. It's about execution. It's about making things happen. I'm making things happen. I'm making things happen. Because too many people don't be doing shit. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. This happened this morning. Uh, for the past couple days, I, I've been checking to see if people have been unfollowing me. I actually downloaded an app. It's free, by the way. I'm not that crazy. I'm not going to pay for that nonsense. But I will monitor it if it's free. So I got it. Found out a bunch of people that unfollowed me. And I took it to heart. And the funny thing is, it's it's always people that I was never really close with to begin. Cl- close to to begin with. But it still fucks me up. Like, in real life, if you come up to me and be like, fuck you, I don't like you. I'd be like, cool, whatever. But then if you go on, if, if you're on Instagram and you unfollow me and I find out, I'm like, ow. It affects me so much more. So in, in the social media world, I'm still like a child. Like I can't, I don't have that callous shit. I mean, I'm better than before, you know, because I used to monitor it all the time, checking my numbers on the daily, like 20 times a day, every day, you know? But anyway, so there's this girl that I was trying to get headshots. She's a photographer and she told me like a certain price, right? And I was really broke at the time. I'm still broke, but not as broke. And I was trying to, you know, work something out with her. And then she said, oh, I'm sorry. I don't go lower than this. This is my standard. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh, Can I get back to you? And I guess I bothered her because she stopped liking my photos. It's like, dude, you can say I think about this a lot. But the fact is we all check who likes our photos, who comments, and we see their patterns, even if we don't try to. I I don't have like an Excel spreadsheet where I'm just like, okay. Uh, Stevie Chang liked five posts this week and the next week liked three because I only liked two of his posts and only commented one time. You know, like, I, I, I don't do that shit. But, but I do notice. And there was a clear absence of her likes. And it's okay. It's fine. But then she unfollowed me this morning after I posted a video of me singing uh, Mario How Could You with the, with, with the speed... Uh, faster and slower. It's on my Instagram. Instagram is mike.j.kim. Uh, I repeat, mike.j.kim. Anyways, so she did that. I found out she unfollowed me and I took it so fucking personally. And I even went to her Facebook and I was like, I'm going to unfollow you. I'm going to fucking unfollow you, bitch. I saw fucking, sh- I'll show you. I'll show you who I am. You stupid bitch. I'm going to get fucking famous. I'm going to get known. People will like me and you'll regret it. You'll regret it because you'll see how many people are going to follow me, the celebrities, and then I'm not going to be following you anymore and you're going to try to follow me and then you're going to wish that you knew somebody that you could uh, raise your name with the, for the, hey, hey, hey. I started thinking all kinds of crazy stuff. And this is all in a matter of minutes one minute too long i know and it's crazy it's like instagram is such a weird fucking place where again okay in real life i don't give a fuck i don't feel like i owe anybody anything you know i i I don't i don't feel obligated to be extra nice or to to let them disrespect me you know what i mean but on instagram I feel like I have to do extra stuff. It's like the unspoken rules. I got to follow back people I really don't really want to follow. Like, I don't give a fuck about what you post. 80% of your photos are like... (laughs) Or just like you at, 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 at like Coachella or places that I don't care about. And you're clearly doing it just for the likes. Look at me. I'm here. Look at me. I'm over here. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Right? And I used to do that too. I used to really post... On Instagram, purely for the likes. Oh, if I post up a picture of me and my girlfriend, I'll get like 200 likes. But then if I post up a video of me speaking my mind, I'll get maybe like 30. So then it's training me to not post 
based off of what people may like. But recently, I got tired of it, especially since I've been on my stand-up comedy journey for the past seven months, consistently and seriously. It's been changing my view on the world and myself. So then I started to post based off of what I really want to post, what I think is funny, what I want to do, right? And interestingly enough, people have been digging it, and it's helping my brand, which, like... I'm pursuing acting and stand-up comedy. Like, I am my own brand. And I gotta be unique. And you know what? I am fucking unique. I just gotta stop letting people and shit get to me. On social media, at least. You know? But yeah, I'll I'll start to like people's photos. And I'll start to comment on them. Because I feel like I'm supposed to. Because if I don't, then maybe they'll unfollow me. And I gotta keep up the image. And the image of... The, 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 in terms of relations between us, right? I don't do it all the time because, okay, if you're listening or watching to this and I actually like and comment on your stuff, I, I genuinely do care. But there's just like a few people, maybe like two people that I do that to where I'm like, I guess I have to. I don't know. It's just weird. Maybe maybe it's just me. I'm just very neurotic. I, I overthink things. I get stuck in my head a lot. Um, which is why I have, I, I really like to be around people cause then I can get out of my head cause I'm an external thinker. I, 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 I think as I talk and I work things out as I talk, which is why I'm doing this too. Cause this helps so much. Even if it's just by myself, this is like a journal. This is like working things out to me. It, it helps me make more sense. It helps me get the energy out that the pent up energy that's just within me that I can't like put together. If I were just to sit there and just be like, just think, you know, like, you know, just like, like introverts. I think introverts are pretty good at that, but I do know that they, they still need other ways to do things too, like journaling and stuff. I'm talking about introverts. Like they're a whole nother species, which I know you're not. I know you're not my best friends and introvert. I hang out with a lot of introverts. Actually, you know why I love hanging out with introverts because they'll sit there and they'll actually, they will listen to you because I'm so extroverted. I like to talk all day, but they sit there and pay attention Like, legit, pay attention. They're there with full presence. Give you all of their, you know, all their five senses are are towards you. I can smell you. I can see you. I can feel you. Didn't mean to take it that way. Sorry. Relax, Michael. Calm down. Uh, Yeah. But introverts... I love you. I absolutely love introverts. I have some of the best conversations with introverts because they're very thoughtful people. They, they think a lot. And to them, it gets overwhelming because they overthink a lot of things. But to me, because they think so much about everything, they're more careful with, with what they say. And I don't know. To me, it's like, it, it, like an introvert to me is like they're walking across uh, on, on a sidewalk and they notice like the cracks in the ground, the little gums and uh, the little poops on the ground versus in the extroverts, just like going all fast, stepping on the gum, stepping on the shit, tripping over the cracks. You know, I got extroverted friends too. I'm an extrovert. I need both, but I love introverts. It's a strength. It's not a weakness guys. Okay. Just cause you're introverted. It does not mean you're weak. I think you're one of the strongest motherfuckers out there. And I love you. And thank you for giving me your ear. Because I need that. Because I didn't have that attention growing up. My parents didn't fucking hear me out. They never asked me, Michael, how are you? They were just like, you fucked up. Bitch. And I'm like, ow. Wait, this side. Ow. Yeah. If you're still listening up to this point, thank you. Because this is episode number one, baby. Uno. Hana. Ichi. I'll learn more number ones in different languages, I promise. Okay. All right. Um, oh, all right. Let's go into open mics. So I have been doing open mics, you know, stand-up comedy, very seriously for seven months. Now, I did it maybe five times back in 2015, but I had uh, I had too much ego back then. I couldn't handle... 
I couldn't handle not getting the laughs because the first time I did an open mic, I fucking killed it. Like, I can say that confidently. I have a video of it. I fucking killed it. Uh, it, may not be, it may not be funny to you, but the crowd there was fire and they were just, they were the best. And after that, the next, like, four times, it wasn't like that. So I started off with 100 and it just got worse. So I felt entitled to the laughter. I felt like you're supposed to laugh at me. I'm funny, right? I'm the guy. I don't have to think about this shit. I just go up there and talk and my words are gold and they will laugh. A equals B. And that wasn't the case. So my ego couldn't handle it at the age of 25. So I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. And I recently started back up at 29. Um, but in between 25 to 29, I did improv for two years from what? 27 to 26 to 28 something like that and in those two years in improv improv is you know group oriented where you don't plan anything you go up there together and you support each other and you just do scenes nothing is scripted okay just in case you didn't know and i was doing that for two years and in the beginning too i thought i was the shit i'm like i just stand up five times before i'm fucking funny you little boys and girls you would not fucking beat me and i do it and it was like the hardest thing in the world. I had to be focused on what was going on because the other person will be talking and then I'll be thinking of something super funny that 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 I thought of like five seconds ago. But then five seconds later I say it and it's too late because I lost my opportunity. So you can't think like that. You have to be present and you can't be like, I'm going to be funny because it doesn't work. So I... My ego got shattered in improv, so I want to thank Westside Comedy Theater for fucking being the best comedy club in the world. You have helped me so much. Santa Monica, 4th Street, by 3rd Street Promenade, by the beach. Think about it. Um, yeah, and it. I, ha I was humbled every single week doing improv. Every single week. I always felt shitty. I was like, dude, I'm just... I'm not as good as I thought. And I think we all need that. And you know what? I'm glad I kept going because I wanted to quit like five or ten times, something like that. Because of my ego. And the thing that came from that is now I can handle the bombing on stage doing stand-up. Because I had the training from improv. Because there's always like this... I don't know. I think there's like this thing between stand-up comedians and improv people where they're like, oh, you like do this, you don't do that. Because stand-up is very independent uh, and you're trying to get laughs and you are by yourself and then improv is group-oriented, um, never planned anything, you just, right? And I've heard people talk shit about each other, but it's like, dude, there is strength in, in both. Now, I did, I did stop improv. I stopped improv and I, I threw myself 100% into stand-up and once I did that, my stand-up game, the progression has just shot up. Now, I'm not the best. I'm not fucking, I'm not super funny, but like, I'm progressing. And I see that for myself. And that's all that matters. But I have to, I attribute that to improv. If I didn't do those two years of consistent improv, of pain, of doubt, of uncertainty, I would not have been able to. To go back to stand-up and be this consistent. Seven months, guys. I'm doing this almost every night. Almost every night. And in the beginning, it was extra painful doing stand-up. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know who I was. I may seem confident talking now, but it's so different on stage, guys. It really is. But I... I I've, but, you know, improv, there is a correlation. There's a huge correlation. You need to have that ego destroyed and you need to feel like shit to understand that you are not the shit so you become humble and you become more of an open book to learn from all these experiences right that's the only way and when you're at these open mics so if you don't know what open mics are open mics are like where people go to practice their uh, their routines with other comedians mostly sometimes just regular audience members but You'll go to, I'm not going to name the place, but it's a place where you pay five bucks and uh, uh, you get a, a for sure spot for, and, and then you're there for, you have to stay the whole hour. All the comedians have to stay in there for the hour. But it's like you go there and there's people sitting in the front rows and then they're, as you're talking and, and trying to perfect your craft, they're doing this. 
They're just like... Or this. Why are you gonna fucking go and pay five bucks to fucking do that? Because I know when you go up, you're expecting everybody else to pay attention to you. So why can't you pay attention to them and help them out? We're all here trying to get better. It doesn't help if you're doing that. Now, before it was like, oh, it's because it's not funny. Yeah, there's times where it's just not funny and great. You don't, I don't need you to fucking laugh. But at least pay attention, right? Like na- Before, I, I said, oh, I don't deserve it. But now I'm like, why the fuck are we all there if we're not going to pay attention to each other? Like I said, you don't need to fucking laugh. Laugh if it's funny to you, but pay the fuck attention. Get out of your head. And you know what? I was talking to some comedians comedians about this. It's They do that because they're insecure. They have too much ego. Or they're just waiting to go up. But you can tell a lot about them if they don't pay, if they don't pay attention and then they look away and they feel like, and you can tell they're getting kind of like uncomfortable. It's because they have weak fucking psyches. It's because they don't have the strength to support everybody else by simply paying attention. Weak-minded as fuck, man. Because, you know, I I, I forgot that the stand-up world is not different, any different than the real-life world. Because there's going to be people that want to drag you down, that don't want to support you, that will throw little jabs at you just to, you know, make themselves feel better about how unhappy they are. And you and you notice, I noticed it once I started pursuing this, and I became I became happier once I left... The, the jobs that I was doing in the past, like digital marketing, being behind, a, being behind a computer all day, like 10 hours a day. I hated myself. I hated everything. And I was living for the weekend. But even then, I couldn't enjoy the weekend because the whole week, I'm just, I'm just suffering. And then you wait for the weekend to like palate cleanse, like you're eating sushi. And then, and then you're eating ginger to get ready to eat for like, like you ate a tuna, you ate ginger and now you're eating uh, uh, salmon because you want to get the full flavor. But here's the thing. You can't palate cleanse your life with a weekend. There's five days out of the week that you're working if you're doing a nine to five. And then you have two days to kind of feel better. But again, it's not even really two days because you're looking forward to Friday night and then you have Saturday. But then Sunday, you know, you have to go back to your shitty job that you hate. And it's like you subject yourself to this this pain, this emotional trauma. And it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but it's not exaggerated. You know what I'm talking about. Where the manager like disrespects the fuck out of you. Where your coworkers treat you like shit and they click up and you feel like an outcast. And you don't even like you don't even like the work you're doing. And you're and you're wondering why am I fucking here? Like I hate these people. And I wanna and I wanna confront them, but I can't. Because it's it's corporate. It's the it's the environment. And then maybe you'll look be looked at as the asshole and they'll hit you more. And it messes with you and your standards for yourself. You feel like you feel like you can't be you. You feel like you can't, like you don't know you anymore. That's what was happening to me. It felt like my soul was being fucking sucked out of my body, like by 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 like this fucking like god hand out. And I'm just like desperately trying to be like, no, no, that's my soul. Stop. I left those jobs of stability to make minimum wage being around people not being behind a computer all day and i always knew that i always knew i loved being around people but i saw it as a weakness because i'd watch everybody else like oh everybody else says they're making more money just being behind a computer and, and they should since they can do it they have a strong mental fucking brain and 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 they can handle i should be able to do it too and i told myself that But here's the thing. Everybody's different. Everybody has different strengths. And those guys that are making a gang of money behind a computer, they cannot do what I do. They will not be able to do it. They cannot. They cannot connect the way I can connect to people. Okay, now I sound kind of douchey. It's kind of douchey. I know. I know. But you know what I'm getting at? Everybody has their own strengths. And it's time to look into those strengths and honor them. Honor them by strengthening them. Instead of looking at your strength as a weakness and then trying to bring up your weakness, like your weakest weakness, because that's what I was doing. But now I just ignore those other weaknesses. Now, look, I'm not saying ignore like all weaknesses and leave them weak and brittle, but I am saying don't focus solely on them. Focus 
and and celebrate what makes you you capitalize on it and this is a lot all, all this stuff I, I learned from Gary Vaynerchuk B- blessed bless bless you mr. Vaynerchuk you have changed my life seriously seriously okay but like I think that you have to you have to do what you really want to fucking do in life you have to push for it because I've never worked harder than I have doing this. The stand-up, the acting stuff, like everything. Like, why else would I purposely put myself into pain? Why else would I would, would I go through that? Because I, because I like it? I kind of do a little bit the, the emotion. I'm, I'm a bit of, a, of, of an emotional masochist. Kind of. But when you really are passionate about something, I used to not believe in that passion stuff, to be honest. Because everybody's that passion is for, for, for first world people who don't, uh, 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 who, 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 who can do, it, uh, you know, like, like it's like, it's, it's like it's some bullshit. No, it's real. It's real. Without the passion, I would not have been able to keep going every night, feeling that pain to improve because I felt plenty of pain doing my other work and I didn't really get much better. I hated myself more. I was like, this is a great opportunity. I have insurance. I can go to the dentist for like no dollars. For what? So I can be fucking miserable? So my health can decline? First, mentally, emotionally, and then physically, spiritually? Because that was happening. That was what was happening to me. But not anymore. Because I'm doing what I want to do. I took that jump. I burnt all the boats. I went from the original island, took the boats to this new island, and I and I got a little scared. I was like, I should go back to that island, the island where it's safe, where everybody is doing what they what they're supposed to do. Stability. But instead, I looked at the boats, do some gasoline on them, fucking lit them up. Now I'm stuck on this island. I can look back at the island, but I can't really see it. Even if I want to go back, I can't. Because I literally burnt the boats in my head. I cannot go back. I got unplugged from the Matrix, and I cannot unsee the truth of who I am. I can't. And it took 29 years to get to this point. 29 fucking years. But it's never too late. I'm still young. And I'm blessed. All those experiences from the past led to this point. And it's only gonna help me in my journey ahead. I feel like I feel like I got reborn, guys. You know, I feel brand new. Sorry guys, the the, the video like cut, but you know, like this is the happiest I've been in my whole life. I don't have any more money. On paper, I'm technically worthless. By society standards. But I don't care. I don't care. I used to care. I used to care what they thought. But that's what led me to keep doing these bullshit jobs. And and making this. And even drinking. Like I would I would drink. and Because I felt like I was. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what's like fun. What, what, what adults need to do. But I, but I even quit drinking too. Because I'm happy. I don't have to drink. To make myself forget about the week that I had. I don't have to do that anymore. And that is a blessing. But I only discovered that through pain. When it got so bad. It got so bad to the point that I didn't really want to live anymore. And we don't need to go into details. I don't want to make it too sad, you know. But... That forced me to take not just a second look at myself, but like a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, twentieth look. I, I had to, I had to look in deeper into myself and figure it out because it, it, it didn't make sense. Like no matter what I'm doing, I'm still miserable. But now I'm not. We're all gonna die, so if we're gonna die, why can't we 
go for the things we want because of fear. Action cures fear. Think about it. Like you had a test coming up and you and you and you were so scared and you studied for it. And you imagine now how hard it was going to be. But then when you actually took that test, was it that bad? It wasn't nearly as bad as you thought it'd be. Or like when you were like, oh, I'm going to oh, I have a date coming up with this, with this girl or guy that I really like. Oh, I'm getting nervous. I'm afraid. Like, what if it doesn't go the way that I want? What if they think I'm weird? What if they think I did it? And you get there and then you realize, oh, it's not so bad. Whether it goes great or horrible, it when you're actually there, it's nowhere near as bad as you thought in your head. Like that fear that you had, that 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 feeling of impending doom. You have to take that leap sometimes. Because you feel better for doing it. Now I'm not saying leave your job and you know, you got you gotta pay bills, all that stuff. I'm just saying if there's chances you're not taking whether it's like uh, you wanted you wanted to take that salsa class, but you were you feel too shy, do it. Try it. Just try things, guys. Anyways, this was great. This was a great like first podcast. Um, it looks like my my camera's gonna run out of battery, so I'm gonna end it right now. But uh, yeah, I I will put in fresh battery next time and get this set. So think about what I said. Thank you for being here. And I have no, again, I have no name for this podcast yet, but there will be a name. So I will see you 